There's something primal about the act of fishing, something meditative. You cast a line into the deep, wait patiently, and see what surfaces. It's a slow, deliberate dance with nature, one where you are left with only your thoughts as companions. But beneath that calm exterior lies the undercurrent of a much darker truth. We don't really know what waits in the depths, and it's from that quiet space of uncertainty that a new subgenre of horror has emerged. What we might call fishing horror. Fishing horror feels like an extension of our collective unconscious, tapping into ancient fears we've carried with us since we first set sail. It's a reminder that as much as we like to think we've mapped the world, we've barely scratched the surface of what's beneath the oceans. H.P. Lovecraft once said that the greatest fear is the fear of the unknown, and nowhere is this more palpable than in these murky, haunted waters. Whether it's the inky abyss, or the creatures that dwell unseen below, we are fishing not only for food or sport, but for answers to questions we'd rather not ask. Take Dredge, for instance. You set sail on an ordinary fishing boat, just a lonely fisherman trying to make a living. But as you navigate the waters, pulling up fish that are, at first glance, entirely normal, the tone shifts. Slowly, you begin to discover things that should not be. The ocean beneath you is not a place of simple resources, but a chaotic, unknown force, one that cannot be reasoned with. Each trip into deeper waters feels more perilous than the last, as if you're peeling back the layers of reality itself, revealing something far more ancient and hostile. Fishing horror is about that tension. The line you cast is like the thin thread that separates us from madness. What you pull from the depths might be a simple fish, or it might be something far worse, an echo of an unseen world, a fragment of something so unknowable it distorts your sense of reality. Consider Morning Tide, where the ocean is not merely a backdrop, but an antagonist. The deeper you go, the stranger things become. You're forced to confront the darkness, not just in the physical environment, but in yourself. It's as if the waters themselves are reflecting your own inner turmoil. And this is the core of Lovecraftian fear, that the things lurking in the abyss are not just external, but internal. The monsters are out there, yes, but they also live inside you. Fishing horror taps into a different kind of anxiety than other forms of horror do. There's no fast-paced chase, no immediate danger, but rather a creeping dread, a slow realization that what you thought was benign is anything but. Games like Fishing Vacation and Lure play with this idea. On the surface, these are simple, even nostalgic games, but the deeper you go, the more you sense that something is off. The waters are wrong. The fish are wrong. The very act of 
fishing becomes an intrusion into a world that does not want you there. Fishing vacation looks, at first glance, like something ripped from the days of the original Game Boy. You're taken on a nostalgic trip to a fishing cabin meant to recapture the innocence of a summer spent by the water. But as you cast your line, you begin to sense something lurking below. Something that does not belong in those pixelated waters. The charm of retro gaming fades as you are left alone with your thoughts and the creeping dread of what lies beneath. This quiet, slow descent into terror is where fishing horror shines. It doesn't need to rush because the horror is already baked into the concept. We are insignificant in the face of nature, particularly the untamed depths of the ocean. As you sit on the shore, rod in hand, waiting for a bite, you realize that you are not in control. You are not the fisherman, but the bait. Even in its darkest moments, though, fishing horror retains a certain charm. Games like Mysteries Under Lake Ophelia play with this balance. There's a surreal, almost playful quality to the horror. It's a reminder that while the depths may be terrifying, they are also fascinating. There's a curiosity that compels us to keep fishing, even when we know better. Like staring into the abyss, we can't help but wonder what's looking back. The only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. And isn't that what these games are asking us to do? To cast our line into the dark unknown, to embrace the mystery, to see what comes up, even if it terrifies us. Fishing horror isn't about immediate satisfaction or jump scares. It's about patience, about letting the dread build slowly as you reel in your line, hoping, praying, that what comes to the surface is something you can understand. But it never is. It's always something more. In Wretched Depths, the terror lies not just in the creatures you encounter, but in the fact that you chose to seek them out. You went to the depths. You dropped the line. There's a philosophical question at play here, one that has lingered in the minds of thinkers probably since antiquity. What drives us to seek out the unknown, even when we know it might destroy us? In these games, there's a clear echo of Lovecraft's mythos. The idea that there are forces in the world, ancient and powerful, that do not care about us. Forces that exist beyond our comprehension. The ocean becomes the perfect symbol of that indifference. It's vast, mysterious, and we are small. As you sit at the edge of a lake, casting your line, you are reminded of how little you know. The surface is calm, but below the darkness stirs. Fishing horror plays with that contrast, the calm, idyllic surface, and the roiling chaos below. We are creatures of the land, and to step into the water is to enter another world. 
one we do not understand and cannot control. In the end, fishing horror is a meditation on our relationship with the unknown. It's not just about the ocean, but about our own minds, our own fears. And what lies beneath the surface of these games, and of ourselves, is something we can never fully grasp. But we keep fishing, keep casting our lines, hoping that maybe, this time, we'll pull up something we can handle. And isn't that the beauty of it? The mystery is the point. We are not meant to know all the answers. We are meant to keep searching, to keep fishing, to keep exploring the depths, even if we fear what we might find. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subbing to the channel for more deep dives into horror as well as some uh, spooky playthroughs accompanied by my beautiful voice. I've put a list into the description of this video that includes as many fishing horror games as I was able to find, and I'll keep the list updated as people add more games that I may have missed into the comments. So if you're watching this in the future, the list should still remain updated as long as I'm still alive and kicking. Thanks again for watching, and until next time.